Good morning, everybody. You guys glad to be at Jesus School today? Welcome to Jesus School, a place where we love to worship the Lord. We love to look at him. We are excited for all our first time guests. If you are a guest, come on, let's welcome our guests here. Yeah, and we're just going to step in and do what we do every single day here at Jesus School. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to love him. We're going to look at him. So let's lean in. Let's step into the river. We just want to welcome everybody that's watching online. We love you guys. And we're just thankful that we get to come together and sit at the feet of Jesus and just love him here as a family. So let's open up our hearts today. Yes, let's just open in prayer. We say, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. We are here for you. We welcome you into this room. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and who you are. We just praise you, Jesus. Can we lift up a thanks to the Lord for how thankful we are? Yes, we love you, Lord Jesus. We ask you to come with your weighty presence. Be in this room, come and touch our hearts. We've come from all over, Jesus, and come and meet us here today. We love you and we welcome you, Lord Jesus, amen.
that part again. We believe it, Lord. Who is he that makes me happy?
love you. Come on, every eye closed, every hand lifted. Lord, we present our minds and our hearts, our bodies as living sacrifices this morning. We love you, Jesus. We love your presence. We love everything about you. And here we are again, Lord, to sit at your feet and adore you. Holy Spirit, fill, fill this place today. Fill every square inch of this building, every heart, every person with the substance of your presence. Let this be a day that is marked with holiness, a day that's marked with you, with you being here. Brand us today. Lord Jesus, we come, we ask you to wash us and cleanse us with the precious blood, the blood of the cross. Cleanse us, cleanse our motives, cleanse uh, what we do, cleanse our, our weakness, Lord, the things we say. And, Go deep today. Go into the depths of why we do what we do and, 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 and purge us, Lord. Purge us so that what we offer on that last day will be silver, gold, and precious stone. Have your way in us. I pray for every visitor who's come, Lord, hungry for you, that they would leave having met you today and tomorrow and on Saturday, that their time here in Orlando would be marked with you. I pray that everyone who's being baptized today would literally be conveyed from the kingdom of darkness into the glorious light of Jesus, that they would die to this world and come out of those waters alive in Christ, out of that grave cut off from this generation and the world. Would you just lift your hands. Lord, we want you to know that we love you and we want to love you more. So help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord praise. Give worship. That was average. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship. Hallelujah. Grab a seat. Good morning. Good morning. School got bigger. <laughs> you guys doing okay? Yeah? You happy? Are you happy? Seven of you are happy this morning. It's good to see all of you. Can we thank our worship team? They're a treasure. Love you. Well, we've got a special day planned for you. Today is preview day. So if you're visiting, would you just raise your hand if you've never been? Wow, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, great to have you here. And, uh, <laughs> they're a little rowdy here, guys. So if you're thinking about coming, that's kind of what it's like here every day. <laughs> Well, good morning. It's a joy to be here. We've got a very special day planned for you. Uh, God is going to touch many, many people. We've got 15 students, I think, that are being baptized today. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I just, I felt driving here that I, we needed to thank Jessica. Before you cheer, I just felt like we needed to thank her 
for all of the weight she carries and her passion, which usually annoys me at home for you guys. I mean, she is all in, and I just felt like her shoulders are, the weight she carries is just incredible, and I, I just feel like we need to thank the Lord for Jess. So we love you. Thank you, Jesus. We have some special people here today. Natasha's here, my sister in love. Stand up, Natasha's here. And uh, the Papa VCs are here. You're gonna hear from Dave, yeah. <laughs> Y'all stand, Dave and Danielle stand. Iz and Yaya stand. This is. And uh, it's an honor to have y'all. We love you. And uh, they're here from northern Iraq. They're full-time missionaries to northern Iraq. And they're here for Jesus 20. And you're going to hear from, from Dave today. And, and then uh, Uncle Ben's coming through at some point. So that'll be a good day. It'll be a good day. Yeah, Ben Fitz comes. You just never know what, what, what's going to happen. But uh, I heard he's on his way, right? So we're going to have 10 minutes. Okay, hopefully he doesn't interrupt. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't see some. Oh, Danny and Shara. Hey. Welcome, Danny and Shara. These are my dear friends. Would you let them know you love them? Love you. Wow. So good to have you. Man, I met Cheryl when she was working with Heidi years ago. And uh, Heidi was one of the first people I ever interviewed when we got a YouTube channel. And uh, that was an experience. I thought, okay, I'm not born again at all. Who is this woman? Oh, we've got a really uh, wonderful day planned. And I want to get straight into it just for the sake of time. Uh, our team is at the field right now. They are prepping the field. And, uh, you know, I'm a golfer, so I was like, hey, y'all need to do this and that to the grass so it doesn't retain so much moisture. They're like, this is not Augusta National. You, you can't tell us how to mow the grass. But <laughs> I called Kurt, our events guy today. I go, Kurt, make sure the grass is like this. He's like, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so they're working hard. I want all of you to be praying throughout the day just as the Lord reminds you. Just just, just, I feel the, the pull, that bridal pull. And uh, we need to collectively, in agreement, pull on the Lord with this. It's really a Holy Spirit-given hunger that we pull from heaven. We're not interested in hosting an event and a bunch of people coming and watching. And, and that if Jesus doesn't come, it's a complete failure. Abs some of you agree with that. If Jesus doesn't come, it's a complete failure. So... Uh, I want us to, to pull, pull on his heart and welcome him. And uh, let's believe the Lord for his, for his tangible presence to, to descend uh, on that field on Saturday. Well, um, for those of you who are wondering what, what Jesus School is like, this is really it. I'm not going to give you a, a speech on it. It is just who we are. We love the Lord. We love to worship and so we're just going to kind of let you into a regular day at Jesus School, if that's okay. So um, we have for the last, when did we start, babe? Help me out. Start what? School. Oh, school. Yeah. <laughs> You're still drunk from that love they showed you. You all intoxicated from their love. Okay. Um, man, I just... This is what we've covered so far. We, we had to postpone because of COVID, so we canceled school for two weeks. But we covered the person of Jesus Christ, uh, specifically Christ from above in John chapter 1. We covered the word of God, that it's divinely inspired. We covered the, the point and power of the scriptures, the, the, the uh, 
the nuts and bolts of the old covenant, the authors, why they wrote it, the amount of authors, the time span, and ultimately what the old covenant is unto. It's the revelation of Jesus. All scripture is the revelation of Jesus. Say amen. We talked about the New Testament. This was mostly in October and early November. And then the words, purpose, and power. November and December have, for, so have been specifically separated for this. What is the gospel? And I heard, we were at the house the other night, I heard, or last night, heard Dave talking uh, about uh, uh, the value of teaching the gospel, not only preaching the gospel and laying the hammer. There's a place for that. We'll do that on, uh, on Saturday. We're going to preach a very clear gospel and thousands are going to get born again. And we believe in that. But something that's been lacking are gospel teachers. People who teach the gospel. And the gospel is wide enough and deep enough to teach the gospel for eternity. Do you understand? It's the gospel at the end of the day is a person. So the gospel is as vast as Jesus is, as, as Jesus is vast. It's important to understand that. So our first, uh, man, our first Tuesday together in the gospel, I covered the incarnation. And specifically Old Testament scriptures pointing to the incarnation of Jesus. Do you know, if you were to ask, uh, and I've tested this, this is wild. I went to two major Christian training hubs. You would know them both. And on the way there, I said to myself, I'm going to preach the clearest gospel of salvation I know to preach for people who have not been born again. Both of these places train thousands of believers to walk with the Lord. The first place I went, I would say about 400 responded to the altar call. These are people being trained for ministry. So they, many of them were not born again. The second place I went, I would, we, we went for two nights, I would say about another 400 gave their life to Jesus. As I began to think through it and really listen, listen to what is being preached in many places in America, I began to discover there's a gospel deficiency. There's a real Bible deficiency. And what I don't want our students to do here is be able to quote Michael and not quote the scriptures. That would be a huge failure on my end. So when I talk about the incarnation, these, these sound basic, but there's power there. That God became a man and has remained a man. Fully God, fully man. That is, <laughs> that's enough to make you want to hurt someone in the best way. <laughs> that there is a literal God-man with a real body seated above the highest heaven on a throne. And he is coming back and will tear the skies open and possess his bride. This is, this is, this is incredible. And this is the kind of stuff that causes hell to tremble. So we moved into the, the, the life of Jesus from the incarnation, his ministry. And we talked about that his actual life speaks. His life is the word. He is the word. Yes, letters in red are uh, a revelation of his heart, but why Jesus did what he did and when he did it and when he took a nap and when he took a break and who he rebuked and why he rebuked them and who he was quiet in front of and who he preached to and who he withdrew from, all of this is God speaking. His being is the speaking of God. And we touched on Hebrews chapter one, that he is the express image the very brightness of his glory, the word in flesh, Jesus himself. Then uh, last Tuesday, I touched on the death and I taught on the cross, which was oh, so powerful. And um, we, we are now, we, now we've moved into the resurrection. Uh, and I had one Tuesday. Tuesday's usually my full day where I just teach until I can't move. <laughs> and I love it. Um, and so we've touched on the resurrection. So today, um, we, in a few moments, we are going to, I'm going to wait on Ben to get here, but we're going to baptize some people. And I, I just want to, <sighs> let, 
Let me just say a few things and hopefully you'll agree. If not, it's Dave's fault. <laughs> Email his ministry if you disagree. <laughs> So, I've been saying probably since 2010 that I felt like the last great message that would usher in the coming of Jesus would be the message of Jesus. Uh, it makes sense to me. I think it's the only message the father has on his heart. It's this is my son. Being that he's a good father. And in the best, most pure way, he's very proud of his son. Rightfully so. Any good father points to their children. It's a matter of nature. And any yielded son points back to his father. And when he gets credit for doing that, that beautiful yielded son understands it's all by the spirit. You understand? So Jesus is possessing a people to yearn and declare him and live with him and with each other in his presence. Once Jesus becomes our only message, I believe that's the manifestation of the Spirit himself through us pulling on the bridegroom. It's that jealousy thing. The best way, a good jealousy that the scriptures talk about. So this thing has to move from, listen carefully, it has to move from branding a Jesus movement, which is easy to do. You just have to have some merch like this. Just, just say really um, it's got to be more than trying to reenact a movement from the 60s and 70s and 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 one of the only ways we'll know that this is a true Jesus movement is if Jesus is more preeminent to us than the movement do you understand he has to continually become more all in all to us. And there's enough language in the scriptures to uh, mess you up for life. Like this. That Jesus himself, that he who descended also ascended and then filled all things with himself. Ephesians 4. Think of that language for a moment. I'm not going to move on until I know it's uh, in the most beautiful way, torturing you. <laughs> Jesus descended into the belly of the earth, took captivity captive. There's an old early church prayer that says uh, about hell, or about the, the earth in Jesus' burial, about the earth receiving him. And, it, and, and the early church wrote, you should have never received the precious son of the virgin, for he's come to plunder you and rescue his old friend Adam. See, this is the gospel. It jars us, but this is the gospel. It's, it's, it's what the saints have lived on for 2,000 years. And G the scripture says that Jesus descended and ascended and on his way up filled everything with him. Well, how do you do that? Do you know anyone else who can do that? And so the scripture talks about Jesus being all in all. Until the bride, no matter where she looks in her heart, all she can see is him. And this is what we call being lovesick. This is what we call being wounded. This is what, uh, this is bridal language. It's, it's all in. The bride, as, as in a regular marriage, she, she lost her name. Understand? She lost her name. That being said, she lost her identity. And, and it's very possible to have identity teaching and not have identity. One of the ways to get that is just to talk about identity more than Jesus. It's one thing to have the language, but proof of being a son or daughter is not being able to talk about your identity. The proof 
scripturally is the spirit cries and I cry Abba. Do you understand? So even in our redeemed state, the bride realizes he's way more beautiful than I'll ever be. This is what I can promise you. At the throne in heaven, there will never be a moment in eternity where Jesus bows down to us. No? Okay. We got to start over. (laughs) You're like, I'm not sure about that. Well, I can promise you that the Lord himself will never worship us in heaven. Jesus is magnificent. So this is what he's doing in a generation. He's awakening until they can't even watch the sun come up in the morning without thinking about his resurrection. Do you understand? Without, they can't watch the sun go down without thinking about the fact that he died. They can't catch a cool breeze without thanking the Father for sending his spirit. It's this type, they can't open the scriptures without looking at him. You know, they're not going to their devotionals. They're going to Jesus through their scriptures. Through the scriptures. There's this thing until they've been totally consumed and a jealousy emerges. And we have to understand that that heart, that Levitical bridal heart, does not just minister to the Lord, but the Levite carries a sword on their side. So there's zeal. There's a holy jealousy for the pure gospel and the pure worship and pure gatherings, pure lives. This is what God is doing. And, and the amazing thing is that it sounds so new. But listen, it's all God has ever known. I remember Dave said years ago, he said, if you gave the father a bullhorn and gave him 30 seconds to preach, this is what he would say. This is my son. Ben, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Hey, bro. Good to see you, man. Just having a good family Thursday, aren't we? This is nice. Let me read this scripture to you, and then we'll bring out the baptizees if we could get them ready. Oh man, this is going to be powerful. Let me read this to you. Go to Colossians 1, verse 9. Are you getting baptized, babe? Oh. <laughs> She needs it, huh? (laughs) Ah, Babe, Ben said you need a baptism. He's starting early. He just got here. All right. Colossians 1, verse 9. I'm going to read through verse 18. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may abound and be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, pleasing him. Yes, Lord. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See what Jesse did? All right. Strengthened with all might, According to his glorious power. Say, I can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. (laughs) For all patience and long suffering with joy. Who knows what long suffering is? It's suffering for a long time. (laughs) With joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. My word, we should be thanking him for that. He has delivered us, and this is what will happen in these baptismal waters today. He has delivered us from the power of darkness 
and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Jesus changes no one when they're saved. He replaces them when they're saved. He rescues them. Jesus is a savior. He saves those who are dying. Yes, preaching should bring encouragement, but before a preacher does anything, he raises the dead. He brings the dead to life with the gospel. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love, say the father loves his son. Say it. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. You know you've been purchased, redeemed. You were once, listen carefully, you were once deemed a criminal sentenced to death. You were then deemed again or redeemed. You've been deemed again as a blood-washed saint. Amazing. He is, get ready. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. Say, Jesus is alive. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Jesus has created all, everything you can see and everything you cannot. Jesus created the air you breathe and holds it. And he is before all things. He is preexistent. He is God. He is absolute deity. And in him all things consist. He made it all. He's before it all. Listen carefully. And it all lives in him. You can't get away from him. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. This is what I want to close with before we baptize. I'm so pumped. I cannot wait to see them go in. All right, listen up. The glorious privilege of the church is to be used of the Spirit to such a degree that Jesus takes and has preeminence everywhere and in everyone. That's our role. That he is seen, and not only seen, but exalted in the hearts of the people to his rightful place. That in all things, Jesus himself may have preeminence. Can we bring the, uh, the people getting baptized out? Are they ready? Let's line them up. There's 15, right? All right. Let's line them up up front here, guys. Let them know you love them. This is awesome. Come on. Spread them out real good. Spread them out. Spread them out. Hey, Dave, would you come up? Just grab a mic, bro. Oh, here. Here's one here. Uh, Dave, Dave has given his life to the Lord. Yeah, you can all sit. I'd like you guys to, you guys can remain standing if you've come up. Dan, Dave has given his whole life to the Lord. His family, they moved, they left everything here in the States, moved to northern Iraq. He's a true Jesus lover. And today, as you know, this is not a mere symbolism. Those waters are blessed, the presence of the Spirit 
will rest upon you and the waters and uh, a great transformation will take place today. But Jesus said, he said, count the cost. If a man builds a tower, does he not count the cost first? If he goes out to battle, does he not count the cost? I want Dave to talk to you about what it truly means to follow Jesus. And then I'm gonna lead you in a prayer and a declaration and then we'll begin baptizing you, okay? Hello. Amen. Amen. As Michael said, you know, this is a, uh, this is a holy event. It's a holy event in, in the sight of God and the holy angels and even in the sight of powers and principalities and, and the saints in the church. It's meant to be something that's celebrated and it's a declaration of the gospel. It's an embodiment, actually, of the new creation. You know, it's interesting because when we open the scriptures, the first scene that we see are waters. It's the first scene in the scriptures. And it says that the wa- it was dark, everything was dark and unordered and chaotic. In the original language, there was chaos and there was darkness and everything was unordered. And that's the first picture that we see God as Trinity. In the context of darkness, the lack of order or a missing image, more importantly, a missing image, lacking image, and chaos. And in the midst of it, the Father speaks. The Spirit of God is brooding over the waters, and the Father speaks the Word. He speaks His Son into the situation and he says let there be light it's the opening scene of scripture we see God creating life out of death and then of course he starts to create day after day he starts to establish order because once we get born again and we covenant with God in those baptismal waters when he causes us to come to life he begins to establish divine order And specifically what that means is he begins to form the image of his son in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, where we embody the gospel. It's not just something that we herald, but it's something that he invites us into through fellowship with his son. And it's that same picture when Jesus is born, as Michael mentioned, of a virgin. He lives a life perfectly yielded to the Father. Jesus is the unique son of God, meaning there never will be another like him. He is God, the son, but he's also the pattern son. When he's born as a man, he's also the pattern son, which means that he becomes the pattern or the image of how sonship is defined for us as God's adopted sons and daughters. And Jesus steps into the baptismal waters in Matthew chapter 4. It's the same exact picture. We see the Trinitarian God. We see Father, Son, and Spirit. Because when he steps in, he first goes up to John the Baptist. Right? The one that God had anointed for the first Jesus movement. There's one more coming. The, The Maranatha Jesus movement is coming. And here's John the Baptist and he, Jesus comes up to him to be baptized. He's in the water with sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors. And John sees Jesus and he says, I will not baptize you. But Jesus is there to identify with his fallen, this fallen world, this, this fallen creation that he created for his own pleasure and for the sake of his own love. And Jesus said, for the sake of righteousness, for righteousness sake, let it be done. And Jesus committed his body, his spirit, his very life unto the will of the Father. And there Jesus stood in the midst of waters with sinners as the embodiment of the new creation. He was the embodiment of the power of the seventh day. The seventh day, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the fulfillment of everything that we see in the Father. He is the Father's voice. He is his face. The Bible says that the fullness of all that God is 
dwells in Jesus in bodily form. Their Jesus, the temple, as he called himself. He said, my body is the temple, stood in the waters and the heavens opened and the father speaks to the son and there the spirit descends and rests on him. And that is the goal of redemption. That is the goal of the gospel and it begins in the waters. And I want to read one passage for you guys from Romans chapter 6 and starting in verse 1. Because at the very beginning of scripture when we see those dark waters, Jesus speaks light and light comes from his face, from the light of his count the countenance on his face. And Jesus creates order by creating his image inside of us and he removes the fear and the chaos and the death he removes us from the realm of death and he brings us to the realm of life and this is what paul says in romans chapter 6 when he recounts the gospel to these romans even as michael said preaching the gospel in churches paul as an apostle is preaching the gospel to churches in rome Many of these believers would soon have to face wild beasts in the Colosseum. Many of these believers who read this letter and maybe their children in the next generation we know under Nero and some of these other antichrist figures had to pay with their own blood. And Paul recounts the gospel from chapter 1 all throughout the rest of the book. But here in chapter 6 he says something specifically about baptism. Baptism is not just something we do as a tradition because it's just something that we do. It's a holy event and it demonstrates and it declares who our God is and who he's made us to be. And he says here in chapter 6 verse 1, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may have newness of life. This is how he starts. Are we to continue in sin? What he's saying is this. The, the waters in Genesis 1 represented the realm of death. And these baptismal waters represents God putting to death all that is from the realm of death in us. Death is separation. All that separates because of sin. And, and how, it's, how it's impacted the human psyche, how it's impacted the human soul, how it's broken relationships, how it, how it mars the image of God inside of us, how it breaks fellowship and grieves God's heart. Everything that has to do with the realm of death, God puts to death in those baptismal waters. Amen. And he doesn't, he doesn't just put it to death for the sake of putting it to death but for raising us up to newness of life. But in between the first thing and the second thing is a covenant commitment that we make to the Lord. 100 fold consecration to Jesus. In John G. Lake, when he, when he, when he uh, spoke one time on Matthew chapter four and Jesus' baptism in the water, he says, Jesus, consecrated himself 100 fold to the will of his father and in the same way today sons and daughters to those of you guys who are going to be baptized here shortly this is the lord's invitation into the most beautiful commitment that we can make but it's a covenant that says lord all that's of the realm of death in me put to death I identify with the power of the cross, not by my own might, but by identifying with the cross of Calvary. And Lord, fill me afresh by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in newness of life. 
It's a commitment to lay our lives down because God only resurrects what we are willing to lay down. God, God only breathes life into those that identify with the cross of his son. So it's by the power of his spirit and all that it requires is a full and absolute commitment where we say to the Lord, Lord, there are no reservations. There are no reservations in my life. My life for you. My life belongs to you. My body belongs to you. Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 6, your after he talks about baptism, your very body, your, your, your members, your hands, your eyes, your feet, your physical body are instruments of righteousness weapons of righteousness they're instruments that we yield to God so that the glory of his name would be made known through the very vessels and temples that he now dwells in and so I want to injure you I want to adjure you and and invite you to make a commitment on a heart level Jesus my all for the gospel Lord, I lay down my life and I give my life to you. I am yours and yours alone. Mark me forever today. Put to death all that is from the realm of death in me that I may walk in the newness of life that you give by the power of your spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who come forward, actually, could we all just stand, please? You know, the, the scripture teaches us that the heart and the confession is involved when it comes to walking with Jesus. And some of these old creeds of the church are so powerful. And they are Magna Cartas of, of the faith. They are they are your declaration that you are coming to faith. And I know it's flowing from a true heart. And uh, the Lord's beating me to the punch already as the Spirit's falling on some of you. It's beautiful. You can see it. I'd like us all uh, to just lift our hands to heaven, including those who've, who've come forward. We're going to declare this out loud. And the heavens will hear this. The spirit world will hear this. Hell itself will shake now. Say this out loud. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For me and my salvation he came down from heaven, He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and, and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. Hallelujah. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, and I believe in one holy church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That is our faith. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Dom, can you have the team go up? Ben and Dave, you want to come with me? Let's line them up, guys. Begin to make your way over. Those of you who are being baptized, just make your way over to Jenna. May I have one more mic? Can somebody grab me one more mic, please? Actually, yeah, just wait there. Do we have a mic over there? Do you have a mic too, Dave? Let me borrow one. We'll just switch back and forth. Hope, are you going to run point there? Would you just tell us your name and why you're being baptized? Where are you from, Clinton? I'm from here, born and raised. Okay. Um, I'm getting baptized because I just want to give my whole heart to Jesus. I don't want to hide anything. I want to fully surrender to him and turn from this world. And it means everything to me, so. And you renounce the world? Yes. Renounce the devil? Yes. And give your whole life to Jesus now? Yes. Full trust in the cross of Calvary? Yes. Come on. Come on. Let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Stretch your hands, everyone, just stretch your hands, stretch your hands. Clinton, tonight, today, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why are you being baptized? Tell us your name and where you're from. And I want to be baptized to rededicate my life to the Lord. Oh, come on. Come on, Dave. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Abigail, today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Come on. Yes. So powerful, man. Tell us your name and where you're from and why you're being baptized. My name is Shell, and I'm from Austin, Texas. And I'm getting baptized because I'm completely lovesick and I want to sign the will of my heart over to him. Do you renounce this world, the enemy, yeah. all it has to offer, yes. your whole life for Jesus? Yes. Come, come. Okay, Shell, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Hey, tell us your name and where you're from and why you're being baptized. <laughs> I'm Daphne Cafe, and I'm from Palm Coast, Florida. <laughs> from um, I'm being baptized because um, I love Jesus, and this is the first time I feel like a daughter. 
Wow. And are you? Hold on, quickly. She may need a little help. Do you, do you repent of your old life and leave this world and renounce the enemy and all his ways and yield your whole life to Jesus? Amen. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 What's your name? Alicia. And where are you from? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Why are you being baptized? Um, well, I was born again 10 years ago, but it was Jesus adding him to my life. Um, I encountered the Lord in the beginning of this year and realized that I was totally wrong. And I want to give him my entire life the right way, according to the truth. And that's of perfect. Come on in. Come on. Alicia, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, what is your name? Alia Oliver. Alia, where are you from and why do you want to be baptized? I'm from Lansing, Michigan. Yep. And I want to be baptized because I'm all in, 1,000%, never going back. I Come love him so much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You renounce the ways of this world. You give your life fully to Jesus. Come on. And we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's your name? Grace. Where are you from? Michigan. Michigan. And why are you being baptized? You're leaving this no. world and all it has to offer? Yes. The devil himself and even your own will for your life? Yes. Giving it all to Jesus? Yes. Come. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sealing your work in our sister's life. We baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, what is your name and where are you from? Um, my name is Wyelda. I'm from South Florida. Awesome. It seems like you've got a few friends here. Uh, why do you want to be baptized today? No, it's great. All of heaven's joyful as well. Why don't you just come in? I'll ask you when you're in. <laughs> Thus says the Spirit of the Lord over your life. This is the end of the road of deliverance for you. This is the end. Do you renounce the world? You renounce the world. You renounce Satan, even your own will. 
you give your whole life to Jesus Christ. He's in love with you. In the authority of His name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we baptize you now. Sister, what is, what is your name and where are you from? Melanie, I'm from Jacksonville. Um, your name? Melanie from Jacksonville. And uh, why do you want to be baptized today? Because I know him in here now and I say yes. Amen. Have you, have you completely turned away and renounced this world, the flesh, your own will, the devil's will? and completely committed your heart to Jesus. Yes. Amen, we wanna invite you in. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful covenant. We baptize you today in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Thank you. your name and why do you want to be baptized today? My name is Elizabeth Kraus and I want to be baptized because I want to fully surrender my life to the Lord and I want to follow Him. That's amazing. Praise God. Where do you come from? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Come on. Okay. Do you renounce Satan, renounce this world, you even give your full whole will to Jesus Christ? Yes. Awesome. Come in. Thank you, Lord, for Elizabeth's life. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hey, uh, your name and where are you from? Yeah, Bryant and Orlando. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> And why do you want to be baptized today, Bryant? Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, I, I grew up in church, but I felt like I finally met the person, Jesus. So today I want to give my, my heart to Jesus, the, the, the God man, the God man, Jesus. Brian, have you repented from your old life, whether it's sin, death, or religion, and placed your absolute trust in Jesus? Yes. Amen. We want to invite you in. According to the authority of the scriptures, Brian, we want to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Friend, what is your name and where are you from? My name is Cole and I'm from Orlando.
whole if you've given your whole heart to Jesus. Yeah. You renounce the ways of this world. Yes. The will of the enemy, the will yes. of your own soul. Yes. Awesome, man. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do it. Cole, the Lord's going to raise you up as a powerful leader. The, the Lord's Spirit, He's regenerating you. This is a precious moment, but this is also a beginning of a destiny that God has had on you for many years. Cole, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hey brother, what is your name and where are you from? My name is Andrew, I'm from Tennessee. And Andrew, why do you want to be baptized today? I want to be baptized today to profess my allegiance to Jesus Christ publicly and to testify that the only way that somebody can be saved is by repentance towards God and by faith and trust in the person of Jesus Christ and I want to recommit my life today to follow Jesus, even if it means physical death. Amen. And Andrew, you've renounced in your heart, the world, the flesh, the devil, even your own will for your life. Yes, I renounce the devil and I renounce the world system in Jesus' name. Amen, we wanna invite you in, Andrew. Thank you, Lord, from death to newness of life. According to the authority of scriptures, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What's your name? My name is Sean Mendez. And, and, uh, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Uh, oh, you're a student? Yes, sir. <laughs> I should know that. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, Ben felt something for you. So go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I just felt the Lord when I looked at you weeping. I felt like God was saying, I'm telling him to be baptized right now. And, uh, and is it, it's true, right? Yeah. So he wants to deliver you fully. That's why Jesus came. It's an exchange of a life. Your way of struggle and trying to do this, it's finished, man. God wants to give you his blessed life and fill you right now today because he's so in love with you. So do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. You renounce sin? Yes. You renounce Satan? Yes. And all the works of the, the flesh? Yes. Sir. Awesome, man. Go for it. Take it. Lord's about to deliver you in a very powerful way. In, Sean, we baptize you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Give the Lord some thanks.
you, Jesus. I think... Uh, You do, you do. Hey, we're going to take a break in about five minutes, but we have got to sing a song, don't we? Can we just give the Lord praise one more time? Come on, lift your voice. to hear 